Welcome to Game Theorem, where we have serious discussions about absurd entertainment. Oh, by the way, uh, listeners, please consider donating to the Nuka-Cola project we have. We have a Kickstarter. You can find the link in the description of our Nuka-Cola announcement podcast or video. And it's it's a project where we want to try to create uh, real-life tasting Nuka-Colas. Yeah, all f- different flavors of Nuka-Cola. Right. We just need some funds to be able to afford the ingredients because making sodas isn't exactly easy Yeah. or cheap. Yeah. Especially when you're making like 30 flavors of them. Yeah. So please consider donating. Yes, please. Thank you. Wait, Kira, what are you wearing? What, this? I'm going clubbing. But we're podcasting now, and you're wearing that? And you call yourself a feminist? What, are you going to try to land five men during the podcast? Yeah, maybe, but that doesn't make me not a feminist. What? How so? Kyle, look at the title of the podcast. Oh. Yeah. That's what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. I'm Kira. I'm Kyle. Uh, Warning, we're probably going to talk about mature themes during this. And spoilers, minor spoilers for a bunch of different things. Like examples that we have. Mm -hmm. Now that we got the warning out of the way, I do think it... I hope you're not serious about trying to land five men during this podcast. Although it would probably get like the most listens and downloads out of all of them if you were to try to do so. Considering this is audio and they can't see me, I highly doubt it. And also, you know I wouldn't do that. I'm with you. No, no, no. I know you wouldn't do it without telling me, but if you were doing it like literally right there in front of me while we're recording, I mean, you'd be fair to be like, hey, if he wanted to stop this, all he'd have to do is say something. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Um, I'm just kidding. Yes. Um, but uh, yeah, so what we're talking about today is, oh, oh, I forgot to mention, it's audio. Being Not being video doesn't change anything. What do you mean? You could still have like... Like, before, like, video stuff was big, you could literally have phone numbers that you would call for inappropriate entertainment. Well, yeah, and, uh, okay, fine. Just in podcast form. <laughs> I think we've created a new idea for a podcast. We should have a sp- uh, spinoff. <laughs> no. <laughs> hey, listeners, any of you... I'm kidding. <laughs> okay, sorry. Uh, what we're Trying t- to pimp me out. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll join, too. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> Um, okay, so seriously though, what we're talking about today is is making a a seductive female. Yes. So we're going to talk about how a lot of people think that to make a feminist or progressive character, or as a feminist or progressive artist, that you can't make a seductive or attractive or promiscuous female character, right? Yeah. A, a lot of a, a lot of people who are opposed to the idea of feminism. Well, does the word bigot apply? I don't know. I think it does. I guess. Because, you know, we might we should have a podcast one day where we just literally talk about the definition of the word feminism and why people recoil from it. Yeah, we should. Because a lot of people don't seem to understand that feminism like is defined as believing the genders are equal. Yeah. <laughs> That's <laughs> literally it. So when you say like, well, I'm not a feminist, but I believe that all genders are equal. You might as well be saying like, I'm not a vegetarian, but I believe eating meat is good for me. I think I, I, that's a terrible example. You um, said eating, eating meat is good for me. It would be eating meat is bad for me if you're a vegetarian. Uh, it's, a, it's a dumb example. <laughs> I, we, we can come up with a better one. Okay, let's do the opposite. I'm not a racist. I just think that there are other ethnic groups that are inferior to me. That's that's the equivalent. How about that? Yeah, okay. <laughs> oh, by the way, I, I was the bad guy in the intro skit again. <laughs> it's okay. I highly doubt people care that much. Anyway, so feminism and seductiveness are not mutually exclusive. You can write a promiscuous character, a woman who owns her body... Uh-huh. Right? Uh-huh. And still be progressive. She can still be independent, right? Mm-hmm. Like, what do you have to say about it's, this, Kira? It's not mutually exclusive. Just because you're a feminist doesn't mean you have to be, like, a prude or whatever you want to call it. Basically, like, pr- uh, suppressing your sexuality. Right. So, w- why why did you want to talk about this, Kira? Uh, because we've seen lots of examples of women in media who are just awfully written 
and they're just there to be, you know, the attractive object or something like that. You know, it's 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 just always really badly portrayed in media. Well, right. not always, but often enough. Right. I just feel like like those bigots we mentioned earlier, often like they'll retort like, oh, you you want to portray people. You want to portray people equally then like, but but why can't we have an attractive character? She's choosing to be that, you know? Or, you know, just think of most of the arg counter arguments you would hear to that. And the answer to that would be, you can still do it, just do it right. Yeah, you just can't, you just can't, like, do really problematic stuff with her. And we'll, we'll talk and go into more detail it's about like, that. It's like saying a joke with somebody as opposed to somebody's expense. Mm-hmm, exactly. Yeah. So, and, you know, we see, like, this is going to be a slice of female representation in media, but we're going to be specifically referring to uh, women that are literally portrayed as, what was the phrase you used earlier? Portrayed as owning their sexuality? Yes. But, yeah, I agree with you, because, like, a lot of women are may even be betra portrayed as, you know, owning their sexuality, but, like, they have a lot of other problematic stuff about them, or, you know, like, the way the story is written, there's... Like a male gaze. Yes. Yeah, there's so many different ways. In fact, when we started writing this podcast about, like, okay, you know what, let's make the rules on how you make a seductive female character, right? Mm -hmm. What What's the things that you do? But then, you know... It's art, right? It can come in so many forms. It really just became easier to write the things that you shouldn't do. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so that's what we've done. We've created a list of like a whole bunch of questions that you can just go through. And if you're writing a female character or if you've spot a female character out there in media somewhere. It's and a you good idea to ask yourself these to figure out, like, is the character problematic in any way? Exactly. Mm-hmm. And I think it's important to note that, you know, art is, is very fluid. Any of these questions that we propose, you can argue your way out of it. You yeah. can have an exception. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Basically, when we ask these questions, like, does, does, does the character do this or does your show do this? And if your answer is yes, that could be a problem. But you can always respond with a reason. You can be like, well, yes, but like... The reason she's the only female is because there's only one character in the show. She's the only person in the show. Well, that, yeah, yeah, I see what you mean. You you could have a reason to back it up. But, you know, if you get multiple of these questions uh, with an answer of yes, where you've done something problematic, you might want to go and reevaluate. Yeah, uh, the, the point of these questions is to get you thinking and to get you to reevaluate, you know, like right. how the character is portrayed and, you know, their motivations and what happens to them. Right. So, like, I would argue if you got only one of these questions wrong and, and you can back it up with an explanation, that might be fine. Mm -hmm. And if you got two, well, you better have good explanations for both of them. If mm -hmm. you got three or more wrong, you better have, like, a really good reason for this. Mm -hmm. And that's, like... That's that's the way I interpret it, because yeah. I feel like really you could always you know find an exception, right? Yeah, yeah, and I I agree that you could always find an exception, but you know it's it's still good to think about these things and consider them when you're having a female character. Yeah, and if you, if you do, and I think the reason it's important is because if you did one of these things mm -hmm. and you didn't think about, it, you didn't have a good reason, mm -hmm. then it was probably just a result of some of some bigotry uh, regarding gender that you may have internalized and not realized you had and projected to this female character. Yeah. Like internalized misogyny. Yeah. Like actually I remember one time Kira, I was actually writing a, uh, a script myself and there was a male character and two female characters. And, y and when I had you review it to give me your perspective on it, you told me, you remember what you told me? Uh, I told you that it seemed like it was arbitrary, these two female characters fighting over this man, that it wasn't, it was, 
more like a petty girl fight over feelings rather than an actual difference in ideologies. Exactly. And that got me to reread it and to think about it. And I ended up editing the script to change their whole uh, disagreement between each other to actually be an ideological one as opposed to one to do with romance. Yeah. Instead of just fighting over the guy. Which I think immediately improved it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, all right. You want to get into the questions? There's really no rush here. We've got, let's see, how many do we have? But I'm sure we're going to get into it with some of these. All right. You want to ask the questions? Or all right. Or should I? You, uh, you, you can ask. Yeah. Uh, is she the only female character? That's question number one. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. If she is the only female character, that's a big red flag. Yes, because if you have a group of characters and there's only one female character, then chances are you're doing a trope of, for example, like four players featuring the girl. See our first episode. Yeah. Yeah. You're basically only having one woman and she's the female, the woman, you, you know, know? We didn't really talk about it in that uh, in that episode. But I feel like that's a really big thing with movies, especially action movies. Oh, yes. like um, Where you have like a, the whole male cast plus the girlfriend character. Mm -hmm. So I think it really applies there, which, you know, it's an odd coincidence that those movies tend to revolve around guns as well. Mm -hmm. There's just something about the gun that seems to be really phallic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, this is a big trope in some of the... Uh, Bond movies, the 007 movies, where they'll have the Bond girl, you know, who's this woman who appears in the movie and ends up giving up and giving in to him. Yes, although technically I don't think she's the only female character, but it really seems like it because the other female characters take such a minor role. Yeah, I suppose there might be more than one, but... I think, I think uh, at least in some of the movies, James Bond's, like contact with mi6 is a woman oh i see number two does she not have a unique personality this is often a thing where female characters in media will have a very like just a stereotype they won't have their own personality or anything like that but they'll just either only be there for the man and so like they don't have their own personality or their motivations are just like stuff happening around them they don't have an actual internal personality well that happens a lot that it seems like uh she literally doesn't have a personality where she's just an echo of another character. Oh, yeah. And it happens that um, sometimes she's just the love object, like the love interest, but mm -hmm. she doesn't have a personality. She's just the one that the main male character is after, you know? It reminds me of Juvia from Fairy Tale. Oh. Because when she was introduced, she had a little bit of a personality, but the moment she became a good guy, she lost all that. Yeah. And her, uh, her uh, one personality trait was that she loved Grey. And that she was always trying to get with him. Despite the fact that he was clearly not interested. Mm -hmm. Although he was kind of a jerk and would never give her a straight answer. Yeah. But, but still, like... They never brought up her tragic backstory again, you know? Yeah, they um, never really talked about it again. She just became a one-liner character. Yeah. So, if you ask, does she have a personality, I would answer barely. Yeah, her only personality is her, her per love for Grey. Yeah, which is dependent on another person. Who is she to herself? Yes. Right. And uh, before that, she's just this gloomy girl who her whole life has been bullied you know, it because it always Because of her rained. rain powers. Yeah. All right. I think that's good. Mm-hmm. Next question. Number three. Does she not have interests related to something other than her body or intimacy? Right. So this question is pertaining to sometimes, like, you'll write or see a seductive character and seductiveness is her personality. Yeah, like the only reason she exists is to be sexy and to give men something to oogle and to <laughs> sleep with other people. So if you see a female character who like constantly drops innuendo and makes inappropriate jokes or uh, is dressed in such a way 24-7, mm -hmm. this is what we're talking about. Yeah. Characters are dynamic. Human beings are dynamic. Even if that is a part of her character, if you have it 24-7, she seems less like a character and more like an animatronic for the male's benefit. Or a caricature. 
caricature. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> she seems more like a caricature because she's just like, yeah. Um, oh, what's um, a good example I, of this? I think Jessica Rabbit from Who Framed Roger Rabbit's a good example of this. Yeah, her only interest is Roger Rabbit. And the only reason she likes him is because he sees her as a person and not a sex object like other people do. But, like, that's literally the only thing she is in the eyes of everyone else. Well, I, th I think this question is more re relevant when you consider that, like, she's always dressed seductively. Mm -hmm. I mean, she has ridiculous body proportions. Yeah. Uh, but she always talks in, like, that seductive mannerism. Yeah, that's true. So, yeah, like, there's just, like, she's, it's 24-7. It's, it's never off for her. Yeah, I get what you mean. I guess that's good. I mean, I'm sure you could find other examples. We're only going to have a few on here. Mm -hmm. You want to go to the next one, then? Yes. Question number four. Are all of the female characters portrayed as similarly attractive? This is a problem where, like, the only female characters are all equally, like, the the conventionally attractive women. I could think of so many examples for this one. Yeah. Uh, basically, any comic book ever, mm -hmm. DC, Marvel, anything, every single female superhero has the same body type. Yeah. And while the hypermasculine body type is the most common amongst the men, you do at least see some other ones. Yeah, that's true. But for women, no. You see, essentially, you know, uh, you know, thin body, breast, butt, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And they always wear skin tight suits. Yeah. Although the males do that too, so I guess that's something. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so if all of your female characters are portrayed as similarly attractive, that's a problem. This is also really big in anime. Oh yes, definitely. Like in fairy tale, literally all the female characters are all like hourglass shape they've got big breasts and they're, they're like the typical conventionally attractive woman i think that's the case in dragon ball z as well although they might have a few like a very few muscular ones but still mostly it's that same body type even mm. while the men are ha having muscles on their muscles on their muscles <laughs> yeah so i think that's ridiculous if you're going to have a multitude of female characters and you want to have like one that's particularly seductive and attractive you can't do that to all of them yeah and it's really like that in fairy tale especially the only one well and anime in general and comics oh yeah yeah you're right wendy is the only one i can think of that doesn't have that body type and that's because she's a child she literally cannot attain it but if you can you must uh-huh that's essentially what it reads as Oh, uh, well, you know, we should also talk about exceptions to some of these rules. Oh, like I for guess. example, the only way I could see an exception to this rule is maybe if you had like a story about like I don't know prostitutes or strippers, like where their body is like mandatory for the environment. Oh yeah, I see what you mean because they have certain like they choose their entertainers. I mean, you can have prostitutes that don't have that body type, so that's important to consider. But maybe I don't. Maybe the story revolves about around a pimp that's not very progressive. I don't know. <laughs> like you could make it happen, but you run the risk of it being forced. So you'd have to try to do really well to sell whatever your idea is. Mm -hmm. Um. In Lost Girl, the two main female characters have different body types. Oh, that's true. Kinsey. Yeah. Yeah. But they didn't have an overweight female. Yeah, and that's come on, true. most of the population's overweight, and you don't have a single one. <laughs> yeah. And keep that, keep that in mind in media. If you ever see an overweight male character, odds are he's portrayed as jolly or happy. Whereas if you have an overweight female character, odds are she's portrayed as, like, ugly or disagreeable and unhappy yes when really i mean the effects of being overweight would normally affect men and women the same way across the board not counting how maybe society would be harder on one gender than the other mm -hmm. yeah uh number five are none of the male characters portrayed similarly Oh, this is what you're talking about, about how, like, if you have attractive female characters, then you should have equally attractive male characters? Yes. I mean, it's such an easy way to solve the gender problem. Like, let's say you just really wanted to have something where all your characters were beautiful, right? Like, we were talking about the prostitute thing. Mm -hmm. Maybe maybe all your characters are literally just models or actresses or something, right? Yeah. But we talked about how you should have male characters, too, unless you can provide a good reason for that. 
Mm -hmm. And so if you have female characters and male characters, why is it that only the female characters are half undressed and very seductive looking, right? Yes. That happens a lot, and that shouldn't be the case. You should also have attractive male characters. Oh, you know what's a really big offender of this? Mm. The video game Smite. Oh, yeah. Because they have gods and goddesses from across different pantheons and religions and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Kind of like Lost Girl, but with gods. <laughs> uh, we should definitely do an episode on them one day. Yeah. But the problem is almost all of their female characters are portrayed wearing essentially the equivalent of a bikini. Yeah. Not all of them, but almost all of them. Oh. I would say at least two thirds of them. A lot of them, yeah. Whereas the males are the opposite. In fact, it's hard to find a male not wearing some type of armor covering him up. Mm-hmm. And that, that, that shouldn't that's, really hold. Like, yeah, exactly. And the only thing I can think of that really doesn't do this is in fairy tale. Uh, you keep bringing him back to fairy tale. Well, there's Grey, and he gets undressed sometimes. We talked about that, yes. Yeah, yeah. But so. he was still pretty muscular. Yeah. See, see the problem with this, be, people mistake hyper-masculinity, super muscles, with being a female desire, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. When it's really not. Because you have to keep in mind like what we think of as the typical female desirable body shape, at least the one that's been kind of handed down to us in Western American culture by models and stuff, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, having large breasts isn't exactly good for you. It can hurt your back. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. And, you know, that skinny waist can sometimes get way too skinny. Yeah, not only that, but it's, like, really hard to attain that because there are literally organs in the way. Right. But it's it's the body shape that a lot of men would say they want. Mm-hmm. Now, when it comes to hypermasculine muscle men, like, like wrestlers and uh, bodybuilders and stuff, most women don't actively seek those type of things, at least from what I understand. Yeah. I mean, you could speak more to that, Kira. No, no, I completely agree with you. It's we're, we don't care about muscles. Oh, can I can I mention a specific comic that I saw online? I don't remember who or what. I just remember the content, mm-hmm. but it talks about this idea. Yeah. Uh, there was this comic that where the, a man and woman were arguing about this, about depictions of these characters, mm-hmm. and the man was going, "Oh, all all the men are shirtless and have super huge muscles and everything," and she responds, "That is a male power fantasy." That's yeah. not what women want to see. Uh-huh. He's like, okay, you know what, fine. Then show me what, what, what the women's fantasy looks like. She's like, okay, well, let's take Batman. Let's uh, take his shirt off. Let's make him nice and slender, but still, you know, kind of a little, little muscle tone in there. Mm-hmm. And let's give him nice big eyes to stare into. Let's give him nice big lips to kiss. And then she shows a picture of this, like, extremely, like, I don't know what you would call this, uh, seductive Batman. <laughs> and you know from a female perspective instead of just being hyper masculine right yeah she shows him this picture and he goes that makes me uncomfortable and she says that's my everyday life <laughs> 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 i'm sorry comic artist i don't remember who you are <laughs> that is hilarious because that is literally how it is yeah so you you really want all naked characters and whatnot Sure, have all your seductive female ones, but then have seductive male ones, too, and it works out. Like, that's what Saints Row does, honestly. Oh, yeah. And I'm not saying they're immune to problems. Uh, we could probably analyze that. They might have some hyper-masculine problems in there. But I do know you can get just as naked with any characters, regardless of gender. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, you want to go to the next one? All right, number six. Is there gender parity between the characters when there ought to be? Yeah, this is simply just having the same number. Or mm-hmm. at least approximately the same number. This is something we actually talked about in our uh, four players featuring the girl episode. Yeah. Huh? Where if you're lucky, there will be gender parity and it'll be equal. But whenever there isn't, there's like a 99% chance of the fact there's going to be more men than women. Like yes, women are somehow always... a rarer species. Yeah, yeah. That's... E- even though there's technically more women in the world. Mm-hmm. Can you think of an example of this? Um, I can think of... Like, well, what do you mean? Like, 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 you have a group of characters, and there should be gender parity, but there just isn't for some reason. In a lot of the heist sort of movies, like, um, crap, what can I say? Well, oceans, oceans. Is that series. an example of there only being one female? 
Uh, sometimes there aren't even any females. Okay, well, that's for a big no problem. reason at all. <laughs> I mean, I think you could probably think of like any fighting game, like Street Fighter, or Mortal Kombat. There's going to be more male characters than female. Oh, that's true. That's true too. Yeah, in a lot of fighting games, there's always more male characters than female. Even in like Super Smash Bros. I'm sure if you count the number of female characters to male characters, it's off. Oh uh, yeah, I, I actually I I bet you that's the case. Mm -hmm. uh, and I know in like Danganronpa, oh yeah, uh, there's always more male survivors than female. Well, except in the first one. Okay, except from that one. But like I said, you know, it, whenever it's not equal, it favors the male characters. Yeah, that's true. So that's a problem. Like it's to the point that like in Danganronpa, which has a bunch of like murder cases that you have to try, you can literally narrow down the suspects by going, wait, how many men are left? How many females are left? Okay, it's equal, right? So that must mean that the next person to die is going to be a woman, because otherwise there'd be more women than men, and you know, we can't have that. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, actually, you're right. <laughs> so it like directly affects the quality of the art, and that's why this is a problem. Mm -hmm, definitely. Right, number seven, is she Caucasian? Yeah. Is the seductive character you have written Caucasian? It seems like people are just, when they try to be progressive, they go at like one offshoot at a time, right? Mm -hmm. Like, oh, let's just have a seductive female character. And she just happens to be Caucasian. Why? Because maybe the writers were Caucasian and having a non-Caucasian uh, attractive female character is something that they couldn't personally relate to. So they didn't write that. Yeah, a lot, like, even when women get a role in media, oftentimes she's a white woman, like, nearly always. Right. And I feel like this comes down to a pattern of uh, enfranchisement, where, you know, in America... disenfranchisement? No, no, the other way around. Oh. Where, like, for example, in America, only Caucasian men had the right to vote. Then, in the 1920s, Caucasian women got the right to vote. Mm -hmm. Then in the 19, oh wait, actually no, it was the other way around. It was 1860s when African Americans got the right to vote. Was it? Yeah, it's just they were still facing civil rights and whatnot till the 1960s. Yeah. So I guess maybe my example was poorly thought through. I'm sorry about that. No, eh, it's fine. It just it does seem like uh, like the order of rights granted goes white men, white women, and then everyone well, else. Well, then then you. Know, African American men, African American women, yeah. right? Which you have to well, African American women have to suffer both forms of bigotry. Yeah, and then of course there's all the other races as well. Yeah, they had to suffer like the intersection between misogyny and racism. Yeah, and, and that's really what intersectionality good, is about. Yeah, we should have a podcast on that sometime. A good term for that is actually called misogynoir. I've always heard the term as intersectional. <laughs> no, I mean that's the term for the combination of sexism and racism that a uh, black woman or woman of color face. All right. I've never heard of it, but I'll take your word for it. <laughs> yeah. Do you want to maybe speak to your experiences at all about this, Kira? Since you are not Caucasian? Nah, I, honestly, I've never really experienced. I can't speak to that because I can't definitively say that I have experienced much racism. Some, but not much. Uh, I have almost have a hard time of believing that pretty much any non-Caucasian person doesn't experience some sort of racism at some point in their, in their lives. Well, when I... I mean, I'm, I'm actually certain that you've experienced racism from my family. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> my father? Come on. Uh... uh... Okay, maybe, but he never said anything specific. You know he meant it. You know he meant it. <laughs> okay. Okay, fine. Um, the most specific thing I can say targeting my race that I've ever experienced is in high school, I would be called Dora because I was Latina. I was like the only, one of the very few non-white kids. Well, that's not right. Yeah. Ah, uh, I'm sorry. That's but you know, that's it, the it, thing I can think of that is specifically like that is you could only do that because I was a Latina woman, right? 
Well, I mean, it's good that you recognize that there's people that have it much harder than you. But mm -hmm. I just thought you might be able to shed some light on this. As a Caucasian male, I I have to mostly talk hypothetically or from other people's experiences. I can't. I haven't personally had to go through go through such a thing. Mm. I mean, I'm. I, I've been catcalled like once in my life, <laughs> but I'm not conventionally attractive, so I can imagine those women probably have it a lot worse. Actually, true. I've known several females that just talk about it, like like passing by. Like I, I was talking to this uh, one woman who was saying, like, "Oh yeah, I can't ride the bus anymore because people won't stop touching me." That's terrible. And she just said it like it was a normal thing, and I'm like, "Wait, wait, wait, what?" Oh, that happens. Oh, um. I mean, it shouldn't be. Yeah, um, my best friend, uh, she's white, but she is very. She's conventionally attractive. Like she has that body type. And she will get harassed. I've been with her out in public and see men, like, yell at her, catcall her, or, you know, ask her for a number and stuff like that while wow. I was with her. Right. Yeah. And it was a small town, so, of course, it it, it isn't as bad as if you live in a big city. But, but again, but, again but, these are just problems with uh, gender. Like, that's not even to add the, uh, the, the racial layer on top of that. Mm-hmm. You know, I wonder, can I ask you a question? Do you think, I hope this doesn't come off wrong, correct me if it does, but uh, since, uh, since you said you, don't, you hadn't faced it as severe, do you think on average African-American women would have it worse than, than you, a Latina woman? Yes, because I'm light-skinned, and so... Oh, that is a big thing. Like, I mean, like outside of America, there's a whole big market for like... Uh, skin whiteners. Yeah, colorism is a huge thing. So I feel like African American women, especially women who are, would be darker than me, have it a lot worse. Okay, that makes sense. Yes. All right, we kind of went on a tangent here. Why don't we get to our next question, which is going to actually relate back to this? Yes. Number eight: Is she ever called exotic without reprimand? Ever? Like seriously, is that ever used and not punished? So like. If a character is racist, right, and they mm -hmm. use the word, and the, and it's acknowledged that, like, that is not okay, then, okay, you can get away with it then. Mm -hmm. Because then, it's You're not the show. You're calling it out. Yeah, yeah, it's not the show that's racist, it's just a racist character. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you, especially if the narrator, right, or mm -hmm. any type of official material calls a seductive woman exotic... It's probably because she's not Caucasian. So yeah. we're talking about the opposite. Like we first talked about how a lot of times you get a seductive woman, it's going to be Caucasian. But even when you don't, often she's just going to be called exotic. Oh, actually, I remember, um, I remember seeing this online. There was a scene from this show. I think it was some kind of a medical drama, like um, what was it called, Grey's Anatomy or something? E ER. I, I I'm not sure. One of them. Yeah, but. This white man was telling a woman, like, she was like, why do white men like me, like my, it was an Asian woman. She's like, why do white men and fetishize us so much? And the white man is just like, well, cause it's because you're exotic. And she just looks at him and she's like, statistically speaking, you, you're rare worldwide, you know? Like, really? Oh, Yeah. Oh, uh, you're talking about just Asian in general. Yes, statistically. Because, I mean, China has a large part to do with that. Yeah, yeah, but statistic you know China has like a seventh of the world's population. Yes, I do know. Sorry. Right. Anyway, so she was saying like, statistically, you're rarer than I am because he was a white man. Mm -hmm. And and he's like, what? And then there was a black man next to her and he's like, you heard the statistically average woman. I, I <laughs> <laughs> sorry <laughs> that was funny uh if anyone can tell me what that's from i'd appreciate it but yeah <laughs> that that is an amusing joke yes playing on the idea of exoticism because yeah. really animals are exotic you call a person that it's belittling them mm-hmm uh, there was actually a, I remember hearing about this uh, popular female model slash actress. Mm -hmm. She was in the news and magazines and stuff. And people called her exotic, like in the actual magazines. Like, Oh, another big problem with this is... Um, she was African-American. I'm oh, sorry, no, not American. She was just African. Uh, uh, another big problem... Actually, with was she American? 
Okay. I just remember she, if she was African American, she was more re- a recent like generation of immigrant. Uh, okay. Um, another big problem with this is like if m- models in other countries are like really famous or they're like an artist or something in another country, like a musical artist, a lot of the times they'll be called uh, Korea's version of something that of an uh, of a musician that we have. Like, for example, if there's a really famous K-pop star who's a single star, like she's not in a group, she'll be called, for example, like... Like the, Korea's Beyonce? Or Korea's Nicki Minaj, that kind of thing. Okay. And it's it's a big problem because it's like, why can't foreign artists stand on their own without being compared to, like, their version of our our musician it speaks to like saying like oh our version is better but that's just your version of it you know yeah i i do think that's a problem i do think that is going away though especially with k-pop because mm-hmm. k-pop is just so big now yeah yeah i think so too but it it happens yeah yeah i just think I think America doesn't have the stranglehold on the music industry as much as it used to, although they're still really holding it as tight as they can. Mm-hmm. All right. Oh, um, I just wanted to say, though, yeah. So, like, don't ever call a female exotic because you're almost certainly just going to be doing it because she's foreign in some way. So mm-hmm. it's really insulting. Yeah. I mean, you can just say the word interesting, you know? Yeah. Because that doesn't necessarily mean, like, oh, you are some weird creature. Like, if you really do appreciate that she's from a different culture and you like that and want to learn about her culture genuinely, then don't call her exotic. Mm -hmm. You know, just say that she's interesting and that you find her culture interesting, you know? What would be a good way of saying that? I'm trying to think of it in, like, a soundbite way because, you know, naturally you could just, you know, explain all of it, but have, like, an actual discussion like, oh, hey, look, uh, this character is meeting the, uh, the famous model from Uganda. Right. Mm-hmm. And like, oh, hey, how are you doing? So what's your culture? Like, oh, well, we do this and that. And that. Oh, OK, that's really interesting. Nice. And, like you have a whole dialogue and everything that doesn't fit into a single soundbite. Mm. So what would be the soundbite version? What would be something that wouldn't be offensive? Maybe just not even mentioning it. Yeah, I feel like because honestly, sometimes even asking someone like, where are you from is kind of offensive because you're only asking them that because you assume they're not from here. And the only reason you're assuming that is because their skin color doesn't match what you think would be a native to the area. Right. I think that can be problem. I think that's kind of like asking if someone's pregnant, right? You might be right. You might be able to say like, oh, well, logically, based on the facts presented to me. But it's not certain. So you're kind of just making an assumption and asking a question about it, right? Yeah. So I feel like it's a problem if that's like one of your first questions. Why not just talk and get to know her? And you'll probably get the answer to that in your discussion. Yeah, exactly. Right? All right. Of course, this doesn't, I mean, this whole list and stuff is about women. We might revisit this and have one about men someday. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Which are a lot rarer. Oh, I forgot to mention in Smite. Yeah. The only the only conventionally attractive male character that's not hyper masculine muscles is Apollo. Is Apollo? Yeah. Oh the, yeah, the, yeah. What's he? The god of wine? No, no, no. A god of music. Yes. Yeah. Yes, I agree with you. Actually. Again, only one though. Mm-hmm. All right. All right. Let's go on. Okay, number nine. Does she take off her glasses and magically becomes beautiful? I'll leave this one to you. <laughs> Honestly, I think it's so harmful. That girls and women who have curly hair and glasses and stuff always end up seeing themselves as the before of every makeover. It's like a movie trope where they start out as like a nerd or something or a geek and then like they just become the popular girl. By putting uh, by putting effort into how they look or whatever. And it's assumed that, oh, you're not putting in any effort if you look like that. And it's just like, that's that's. Not nice. And oftentimes, even uh, even if there isn't the trope of you're becoming the popular girl, there's if there's a makeover or anything like that, then the makeover is specifically like getting rid of her glasses and making her, her hair straight and that kind of thing. Because it's seen like, uh, you know, it's 
it's just not conventionally attractive. So if you're getting a makeover, you have to strive to be as conventionally attractive as possible. I think the the biggest problem is that they they kind of equate in in that trope that your appearance is equal to your worth mm-hmm. when that, it, when it isn't. Yeah, that that's a big thing too with it. Right. So that's the problem. Like again, you know, exceptions. We gotta start mentioning exceptions. So like an exception for this one, I know we haven't mentioned exceptions for all of them, but you could think of them. Even the exotic one, like you'd really have to reach to think of an exception for that. Mm-hmm. I don't know how you could do that <laughs> uh, without being offensive. That's like trying to use a curse word in, or, or not a curse word. That's like trying to, that's like trying to find a right way to use the N word. Yeah. Good luck with that. I will not be touching that. Well, good luck with that unless you're black. <laughs> Oh, well, I guess that makes it easy then. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't think that really applies with the word exotic. Mm-hmm. Okay, so anyway, an exception with this, I feel like you could make a like a makeover thing where like she like learns to discover herself, but then realizes, you know, this isn't really who I am and reverts back or something. I feel like as a lo- if you're doing a makeover, as long as she's like, you know what, I want to put more effort into my appearance and I want to look nice, so I'm going to learn how to do that. And I'm going to specifically go get a makeover to do that. Because a lot of the times it's... Like pressure? Yeah. It's pressured or she doesn't consent to it and stuff like that. And it's just like, if she actively says, you know what, I'm going to try harder to look nice because I want to look nice, then that's her prerogative. And she can do that without straightening her hair and taking off her glasses. Okay, I would just caution that these other rules still apply, though. Even when she does that, she can't just be perfect. It can't just solve all of her problems. She's still going to be a flawed person. Yeah, exactly. That, too. Because, like... uh. For example, in weight loss stories where a woman suddenly loses a lot of weight, a lot of the times, oh, magically, everyone thinks she's so pretty and is uh, her life is just so much better now. Well, we put magically in the question because sometimes the effort's like non-existent. Yeah. <laughs> okay. There's actually a parody of teen movies that specifically does this where the girls literally she just wears a ponytail and wears glasses and they literally show the popular girl taking off her glasses and slipping her hair out of the ponytail and that is all she does and it's it's a parody of How? this trope she's putting on a ponytail and glasses no she's taking it like literally that's all she does it's and? making fun of this trope by saying like that's all they do you know like it's making it out to be ridiculous. So she just does that and completely changes her demeanor? like It completely changes her look or whatever. So the way they're portraying as if it's a big deal when it's really not. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, I was, con- I was confused by your description. Mm-hmm. Okay, next. I know you like parodies. Maybe you should watch it sometime. Maybe. Number 10. Does she wear heels to places other than opulent parties? Opulent parties includes clubbing and nightclubs, just so you know. Opulent means money. Well, yes, but I asked you, I was like... A nightclub requires money to go there. Okay, but a lot of people wouldn't consider that an opulent party. How much do you spend on a clubbing outfit? And makeup before then? And getting there? And food and alcohol? That sounds like an expensive night. Okay. I mean, I assume. (laughs) (laughs) Don't worry, I've never, I've never done that either. I had a friend once who, like, on her uh, 18th or 21st birthday, I forget which, she immediately went clubbing that night and just like, she she came back the next day and was like, "I'm good, I don't need to go back." <laughs> she never went again. She is like, I just never need to do that in my life ever again. <laughs> but okay, I've talked about this before. I hate heels. I hate high heels. Like, They're completely like, impractical. The only exception is if, like, your character is, like, actually going to a gala or, for some reason, it's a heel-centric character. Like, Kinsey from Lost Girl seemed to come kind of close because she was so big into fashion. Yeah, like, she liked looking fierce and heels were a part of that for her. Right. So, unless you're having something like that, it just... So many times it feels like a, a heels are just put on a character, and you know why women wear heels, right? For men. Yes, they wear it to make their butt jut out. <laughs> Although, fun fact, heels were originally worn by men. Yeah, I know. They weren't as ridiculous as they are nowadays, though. Yeah, but I mean, some women like to wear heels just because they they think it makes them look 
good and they want to look good, you know? And in that case, I feel like that's fine. Wear whatever you want, but don't knock someone for not wanting to wear heels. Don't tell her that she's like not a woman or anything like that. I mean, I think you're already going too cognizant into it because like 90% of the time, oh, probably over that, when a female character wears, wears heels, it's literally not ever once brought up as a point of discussion. Yeah, you're right. You're or right. not even in any way implied. Like, like if she's wearing heels and like a gala type of dress to like every location and she explains like, oh, I like looking nice even when it's not practical. I'd be like, all right, I guess. I hope you can justify that because it seems like a dumb reason, but at least you've got a reason. Mm-hmm. But... So often they're just wearing heels for no reason. I have two big examples for this. Yeah. One is Metroid. Uh huh. Samus, uh, she's the one in the power suit. I'm sorry if I spoiled something from the 1990s, but yeah, Samus is a woman. Because mm-hmm. when her power suit goes off, she's in like this uh, zero suit. Yeah, the zero suit, which is like this skin tight. Like almost is, is spandex the right word? I don't know. Like I guess so. Maybe like, latex, honestly. <laughs> like like an almost like an astronaut suit, like underneath the power suit. Yes. So it's very skin tight and revealing, but you know, it kinda makes sense, right? Because mm-hmm. she's wearing that underneath the big bulky power suit. Mm-hmm. But when she appeared in the latest Super Smash Bros., the one for 3DS and Wii U, they decided, let's give her heels. Doesn't she wear heels in the Metroid games if no. you play a Zero Suit Samus? No, she never wore heels before that. Oh, really? Really. Even in her Zero Suit? I mean, I haven't played all the Metroid games, but... Well, I'm not sure you are even get to see her in a Zero Suit. But I just remember... Well, you do sometimes. But it was a big deal when they added that in 3DS and Wii U, because I had not been there in previous installments. Oh, well, that's really dumb. And they tried to justify it. They're rocket heels... They shoot, like, jets out of them. Wow. You couldn't just do that out of shoes? <laughs> yeah. Combat boots would probably do that just fine. And it's ridiculous, because Samus is supposed to be, like, really tactical, like a really good mercenary, mm-hmm. right? But, oh, now she wears heels. How does she wear that inside the power suit? Yeah, exactly. It's it's dumb and it's idiotic. I hate it. <laughs> uh, it, yeah. it ruined... Uh, the integrity of her character. It's like, I can't believe her. Like, I just imagine like Samus in front of me, like looking at me like I'm her next target. Like, you're going to die. I'm going to get you. And then she just starts walking and you hear like clinking and then she's like trips and falls over. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, you know, there's this actually this, this quote about actresses. Because a lot of time, like human actresses have to wear heels because they're told to, because that's what they want the character to do. Mm -hmm. So it's really hard on the women that have to play these characters. Yeah. Honestly, wearing heels enough can literally change your bone structure. Wow, that's terrible. It's like the uh, foot binding from the Chinese. Yeah. Although less extreme, but still. Yeah, it's like that kind of thing where if you wear them often enough to the point where they're comfortable on you, then you've literally changed your bone structure in your feet and also like how you stand. Wow. So I just wanted to point out, like, I've, I've heard this quote. I don't remember what the actors were, but whatever male actor did really good in a role on, on TV, right? Mm-hmm. A female actor had to do the same thing while wearing heels. Oh, wow. <laughs> uh, anyway, so the other example was Nier Automata. Oh, yeah. Where the female android, 2B, is literally, like, skating across the desert in heels. That's that's it's, was really ridiculous. It's dumb. Like she's supposed to be an assassin. Yeah, and the male counterpart was just it, regular shoes. Yeah. <laughs> it was ridiculous. Yeah, it was kind of ridiculous that they just gave her heels. You they could have given her just boots. Yeah, you write a female character, I advise you just give them boots. Mm-hmm. Like boots are cooler anyways. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's my opinion. <laughs> okay, next question. We actually are really running out of time, so we got to start lightning rounding these or something. Okay. Uh, t- number 11, do all of the female characters wear heels? It's the same thing, but even worse. If every single female character wears heels, you know you got a problem. Lost girl. Yes, lost girl. <laughs> mm-hmm. Number 12, if she, pro- dre- if she dresses provocatively, does she not have a reason for doing so? Yeah, like, you know, if she does that, you simply just got to say why. Like, What motivates her to do that? Mm -hmm. Even if it's simply like, I want to dress this way because I want to look nice or I'm into fashion, then that's her reason. Exactly. Yeah. 
Okay, number 13. Is the amount of time and effort she puts into her parents never shown or implied? It's kind of like the Magically Beautiful, but it's just 24-7. Oh, yeah, I get what you mean. Like, I feel like Amora, from, or I'm sorry, Anora from Firefly does this, right? Oh, yeah. Where she's just like the beautiful uh, prostitute the entire time, but uh, you never really see her having to go through the effort to keep that appearance up. Yeah, she never, like, you never see her putting on makeup or anything like that. Maybe it's implied, but it's definitely not shown. Yep. All right, number 14. Does her outfit and body parts follow the laws of physics? Yes. So, like, you could probably mention, like, breasts, right? Yeah. Or just, like, outfits that make no sense. Like, how are they holding up, like, a lot of uh, fantasy armor on, on right? Yeah, in, in anime and stuff. Well, also, uh. there's a big thing, like, with comics. Like, I'm an animator, right? Yeah. There's there's this one image of, of a comic of, like, Spider Girl or something. Mm-hmm. And she was in, like, this weird pose. And it's, like, a it's a it's it was literally a lesson that I had to learn when I was learning my animation classes. Uh, oh, really? Yeah, they, like, they showed us a 3D mock-up of, like, what this character was like, and all of her bones were broken. <laughs> oh, my God, really? <laughs> yeah, because, like, you cannot get into that pose. It's just not possible. <laughs> Wow. Because it was like simultaneously like showing her butt and her breasts and her face and her forearms. And it's just, you can't do that. Yeah, that's, that's disturbing. Did you want to come up with an example for that? Um, no, not really. Uh, I mean, Bo from Lost Girl, like, I swear to God, she has to wear like corsets constantly or something with how much her boobs are pushed up. <laughs> possibly. Yeah, but. It's, it, it was just weird. I mean, that at least obeys the laws of physics. It's just a choice. A weird choice. Yeah. Okay, next. All right. 15. Is her status as an attractive female character correlated with her status as a villain? Yeah, so, like, is the only attractive female character the bad one? Yeah, because that is that is portraying sexuality as evil. Poison and, Ivy. Yes. And not only that, sometimes the bad female character will also subtly insinuate that she's not exactly straight either. Yeah. Which um, portrays that, you know. The only ca- non-hetero character is the bad one. Yeah, exactly. Okay. 16. Is she the only character who disrobes? It's kind of telling. It's kind of related to, you know, are there any men that are attractive or other females, you know? Mm-hmm. 17. Does the camera pan across her exposed body? This, like, for the male gaze. Yeah, that's like kind of literally thing. like the cameraman is, is partaking in this. Yeah. All right. 18. Does something terrible happen to her after she is disrobed? Also, let's just go ahead and put 19. Does something terrible happen to her after she sleeps with someone? Yes. This is basically horror movies incarnate. Yeah. And uh, in Firefly, they did this with one episode. Uh, spoilers. Mal. Mal sleeps with a prostitute and then she dies later on in that same episode. It really felt like they're punishing her for sleeping with him. 20. If she sleeps with another woman, are their hands visible the entire time? We've mentioned this before, but that's not how intercourse between women works. Yes. All right. 21. If she sleeps with another woman, does she get killed moments later? Okay, this is a bit of a spoiler, but in, if you ever watch the show The 100, there's a huge outcry for this. There was a character who had never slept with anyone, decides, I want to sleep with a woman, and is killed immediately after. Yeah. That's a barrier gaze. It's a big thing. 22. If she was abused at some point, is the abuse shown in graphic detail? Yeah, sometimes, like, it's it's very noticeable how violent that is. Yes. Uh, Did we have anything else about abuse on here? Oh, okay. Oh, I thought we said we had said we had 22. We actually had 32. Wow. Okay. Um, we got to just skip around. We do not have time. We, oh. we kind of maybe took a little long. Okay. Um, you mind if I just kind of rush it? I talk really quickly. Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Okay. 23. If she was abused at some point, is she shown dealing with the trauma instead of just being a plot point? 24. Does she just exist to support a male character? Oh, one of the Spike Chunsoft games was a really big offender in this, and they literally faked it out and pretended like you had a female character when she just gets killed off at the beginning of the game. It was false advertising. I hated it. She only existed to support the real protagonist, male character. Mm-hmm. Uh, 25. Does she give up her lifetime or resources for a male character inexplicably? Pretty much the same thing, just more so. Mm-hmm. 26. If she engages in intimate physical activity with another character, do either give enthusiastic consent? Oftentimes, you know, rape is portrayed as being, like, mutually beneficial. When it is not, Mm -hmm. think of basically any uh, Harrison Ford movie. Yeah. If she chooses to romance others, are they... 27. Oh, sorry, 27. If she chooses to romance others, are they all men that are considered less attractive than her? 
you know, attractive woman, you know, regular guy. It happens a lot. I'll do 28. 28. If she was born sexy yesterday, does she immediately begin a romance with her caregiver? Yeah, like a robot or or someone with a child mentality, but an adult body get taken advantage of. Mm-hmm. 29. If she is kidnapped, does she fall in love with her captor? That's just messed up. Yeah. 30. Is she replaced with a very similar but different character in the sequel? Mm-hmm. Like every James Bond movie. Yeah. Uh, does she suffer under the power that... 31. Oh, yeah, 31. Sorry. Does she suffer under the power that others wield constantly? Is she not powerful and independent in her own right? Mm-hmm. 32. Would she pass the Bechdel test with another female character at any point? You know what? Let's just save the Bechdel test for a different episode. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, wow. I'm so sorry that we took so long in the first ones and we couldn't really go over all of these in detail. Yeah. We overdid a little bit. I'm sorry about that. It's okay. I know I was really like, don't rush. We got plenty of time. That's the thing with these podcasts. We always have to rush towards the end. Yeah, because we just, we have so much material to get through. Right. Now, uh, before we come to a close, there was some stuff I wanted to talk about. Mm -hmm. So, first of all, we still have that Nuka-Cola project going. Yes. We should have mentioned that up front. I'll go back and edit it. (laughs) Okay. Uh, yeah, so we still have that Nuka-Cola Kickstarter that that we have to do. Please consider donating to it. You, there's, like, not much time left. Uh, just reference the earlier part of this podcast that I edited in. <laughs> but please consider donating if you ever want to see that actually happen. Mm-hmm. And I also wanted to mention that... Uh, so there's another podcast... Uh, it's a feminist podcast called, oh, yeah. called, called Stuff, Stuff you, Your Mom Never Told You. It's a really big one. And yes. And I Ky- was mentioned on it. Yes. Kyle wrote in on it. And what? what which one is it called? What? What episode? Oh, uh, it's the one about uh, changing your last name or women changing their last name when they get married. Yes. At the end of that episode, they do read your comments and they read his. Yeah, because they had, I was commenting on a, spe- on a previous episode about video games and they mentioned us in this podcast. They didn't name drop the podcast because, you know, we didn't pay them money. Mm-hmm. But it's really cool. If you guys want to check it out, although they already have plenty of fans, so... Don't leave us, please. <laughs> but yeah, check them out. They're, it's cool. I, I was really, I thought it was awesome that we were mentioned. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then uh, also do the Nuka Cola stuff. Please. And uh, check out our email at gametheorems at gmail.com for corrections, feedback, or suggestions. What? Were you going to say something? We got social media at the Wazoo. Oh, we got, we got social media that's so seductive, you're just going to be drawn to it. <laughs> you're silly. <laughs> All right, bye. Bye.